We suck at driving. Seriously, it's bad. The latest estimate back in 2017 from the NHTSA shows that about 37,000 people per year in the United States die from a car crash. That's about one person every 14 minutes or about the length of one of my videos. And worldwide, that number is over 1.2 million. 94% of serious crashes like this are due to human error. Alcohol accounts for almost 11,000 of them, speeding almost 10,000, and distracted driving, surprisingly, only 3,000. So the question is, as cars become more self-aware and become more capable of driving on their own, and we continue to and become even more distracted with things like social media and our phones becoming more and more of a nuisance, can these two converge and can things like Tesla Autopilot really save us? And what would that mean if they could? Let's dive in. In 2013, the use of a handheld device while driving started to rise sharply. The latest estimates as of 2017 show a total of 7% of people manipulating their devices while driving. Not good by any way you look at it. This pattern follows a similar rise in both mobile device usage and social network adoption. And of course, this trend isn't going to stop. eMarketer estimates that by 2021, US adults over 18 will be spending almost four hours a day on their phones. Think about that, four hours a day. If you want more time in your day, you don't need to wake up at 5.30 a.m., just put the phone down for a little bit, and there you go, you got more time. Imagine that. So we're bad at driving. Ever since the beginning, we've been bad at driving, and phones are becoming more and more of a problem. But the studies that actually look at cell phone usage in cars are kind of conflicting. On one hand, talking and using it up to your ear aren't really that conclusive that it's a bad thing. However, anytime you take your eyes off the road, you are twice as likely to get into an accident. So that could be checking your Instagram or something like that, or eating a hamburger or picking something up or turning around to take care of your screaming child. Not that I've ever done that, you know, or anything, but you get the point that distractions are actually nothing new. So how is it that the rate of traffic-related deaths has dropped by over two-thirds in the recent decades. What it comes down to is the tech in cars just making them a lot safer. From lines on the road to seat belts, car safety tech has been improving ever since cars first hit the road. Some of the original ideas were a little maybe harebrained, we'll call them, but we've learned what's worked, and a lot of the things that are in cars now are all designed to make them a lot safer. Specifically, a good example of this is the seat belt. Speaking of the seatbelt, it is hands down the dollar for dollar winner on saving lives. But when they first came out, car companies really didn't want to install them and the adoption rate was really low. A big reason was because if you had something like a safety harness in your car, it implied that the cars themselves were not safe, which is true. And since then, we've had countless improvements from warnings about air pressure in your tires to airbags themselves to even some of the craziest, most advanced things that we've ever seen in cars that Tesla is offering today. So if you fast forward along this path of cars getting more advanced and making driving easier, causing less crashes, eventually you reach the case of full self-driving. Now, there are no cars on the road today that are actually full self-driving. However, Tesla offers the most advanced system that you can purchase. I happen to have one of these Teslas, so I thought it made sense for us to go take one for a drive and see what it can really do. Let's go. So Navigate on Autopilot is a system that really takes this sense of full self-driving capabilities into reality. It's really what brings it home. And there are lots of settings that you can choose when it comes to how you want to do that. Notably, the speed-based lane changes, you can go from disabled to Mad Max mode, which is great for Southern California, specifically LA. And the idea there is that if you're stuck behind slower traffic and maybe you're going way slower than the, the freeway is, it'll automatically go around them and you know find the fastest route possible between all the cars on the road. Now, you can have it confirm this lane change by tapping on the steering wheel or on the stock, or you can have it disabled to where it'll automatically do it. And that's kind of crazy if you think about it. I mean, the car will navigate you, go on and off from freeway to freeway, merge, and even go around traffic without really any input from you whatsoever. 
Now there are ways to have notifications and I have those turned on for this demo, but all told the Navigate on Autopilot system is as close to full self-driving as anything on the road today. Now the other big feature built in here to Tesla's that I found to be most useful when it comes to avoiding accidents is the forward collision warning. And the idea here is that as you're driving, the cars in front of you, way in front of you, two, three cars in front of you may stop without you even noticing. Now you could be looking ahead, everything appears to be fine, or let's, let's say you're checking your phone, which I hope you're not doing, or you're just looking off at you know, something on the road. It doesn't matter. Like there are so many things and ways you could be distracted. This system will use its forward-facing radar to give you a really big visible and audible warning, and we'll test that here in a minute, to let you know you need to stop, you need to take control. There also is an automatic emergency braking system built in, but that really is the last resort. And if you're going too fast, that isn't gonna have enough time to really stop you. So all told, these are the two most important features, I think, when it comes to safety uh, on the road today in a Tesla. All in all, Teslas have a ton of safety features, which is, again, why they've achieved the safest ratings of the NHTSA's testing of any car ever. But now, it's time to get it on the road and see what it can do. Of course, don't forget your seatbelts. Let's go. So we're just about there. Uh, the car is about to put us in the off ramp and then relinquish control to me. So you can see here, it's gonna give me a little chime, navigate an autopilot ending and taking us directly into the route. And now it still is making the turn and uh, I'm gonna disable autopilot because we made our journey. There it is. So that was the forward collision avoidance where it detected the car in front of me had stopped, yet I was still accelerating. I was still going forward at the normal pace. And it gave me a, a visible warning on the screen and as you heard, an audible one. That to me personally, I've actually encountered multiple times and it's super helpful. So I think that there is a lot built into these cars to help prevent you from actually getting into an accident. So Tesla is making huge strides here, but they're not quite there yet. The question is, will they actually be the first ones to deliver a self-driving car to the public? Well, as you may have guessed, it comes down to the data. You didn't guess that? You should know, we should know, you know, that's my, my thing, that's okay. <laughs> what it really means is that whoever has the data is the one that's gonna be able to deliver this. And if you don't believe me, here is my good friend and PhD of computer vision, which is the technology, the machine learning AI kind of technology that actually powers how Tesla is approaching self-driving cars. His name is Satya Malik, and I interviewed him a while ago about this exact question. The biggest thing that you need is data, lots and lots of data. And that's where the challenge is. You know, uh, if you look at the field of AI, you can get the best architecture, like the neural network architecture. They are, you know, they are writing papers about it. Not only are they writing, they are sharing their implementation uh, once a new architecture comes in, I can try out, try it out within an hour. So it's all free, everything is available. Now the thing is, why would they do that? What's the catch, you're thinking? The catch is that you will never have as much data as they have. The person who has the biggest data set is ultimately going to win. So the way these systems work in these cars is that they learn from their past experiences, just like you do, just like I do, just like most living things do. They have a collection of data, and based on that data, they try to predict what is gonna happen next. So that's the concept of machine learning. That's exactly how this works. So in fact, if you could fast forward, you know, maybe 15, 20 years into the future, and pull back and, and go get the exact perfect algorithm for self-driving cars and bring it back to today, we wouldn't have self-driving cars overnight. 
you would still need all of the data for that thing to work. You see, so collecting the data of self-driving or autonomous miles is the most important thing to get us to that point of where we can really trust and rely on these cars to drive themselves. So who's ahead in the data collection game for autonomous miles? Yep, it's Tesla, of course. From their over 500,000 cars already on the road, Tesla has over 1 billion autonomous miles in their database and are adding millions each week. Compare that to the next closest competitor, Waymo, and they're around 13 million of the last count, adding around 25,000 miles per day. So in a week, Tesla is likely able to log more autonomous miles than the rest of the industry does in an entire year. Now we don't have official numbers on that, but that's the scale of difference we're talking about when it comes to who's ahead in this game of collecting autonomous miles. Because as you saw Satya tell us, that is what's gonna make the difference and get us to that point of self-driving cars becoming a reality. So when it comes down to it, a computer-driven car with all of the data and everything it needs to make good decisions is gonna be much safer than a human. That's really not even an argument at this point. It's a foregone conclusion. We're just not quite there yet. And when that happens, estimates from the NHTSA show that it will save the US economy alone around $242 billion. That was a couple of years ago when they put that out. So that is a massive amount of money that will be saved by not having you know, accidents themselves and the insurance and the lawsuits and the tow trucks and the police and all the things that just directly are caused by these crashes. And the larger estimate of the productivity loss from all the people that die in these crashes is closer to $900 billion. So we're talking about a massive, massive boom to the US economy here and worldwide for that matter. I don't have the numbers, obviously the world is a big place, but you can see here that, I mean, $250 billion, which is close to what the estimate is for the US in direct costs, that's almost half of the defense budget for the entire United States. And as you can imagine, the United States spends a ton of money on defense. So this technology could and will change our lives forever. Really, all we really should be focusing on right now is how soon and what can we do to help it get here faster. So thanks for watching. I'm really curious what you guys have to say about this. Is there something else that's missing here? Does someone else have a better thing? I haven't seen it, I haven't found it, but I'm human and like all humans, especially those that are driving, we all make mistakes. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below and don't forget, when you free the data, your mind will follow. I'll see you guys back here in the next one. Hey, thanks for watching the video. I hope you got something out of it. Now, if you wanna dive a little bit deeper, become a part of the Teslanomics community, consider joining us on Patreon. So what we have set up are different things and ways to engage, such as a Discord group, which is like this chat room, that is just the folks that support the channel through Patreon. I'm on there almost daily, engaging in conversation about how Tesla and others like them are changing the world around us for the better. So if you'd like to learn more, go ahead and go to patreon.com slash and I hope to see you there soon.